Amiable viewers, welcome to this week's edition of Science and Spirituality, the first in a two-part series. The origins, lifestyle, and knowledge of early civilizations can be understood through the amazing artifacts that have been unearthed in various parts of the world, which suggest that ancient humans knew much more than just the use of simple stone tools. Many legends speak of a time when gods, goddesses, giants, and visitors from the heavens walked the earth. Jason Martell from Los Angeles, USA has spent the last 15 years researching this topic through written records, artifacts, and other materials showing evidence of humankind's activities in the distant past. Mr. Martell is one of the world's leading researchers and lecturers on ancient but seemingly advanced technologies, as well as early civilizations' interactions with beings or extraterrestrials said to have descended from the skies. He is the author of Ancient Alien Artifacts, Visual History of Ancient Astronaut Research, and Knowledge Apocalypse, Ancient Astronauts, and the Search for Planet X. In addition, Mr. Martell has appeared on TV channels such as Discovery, Sci-Fi, and the History Channel. A lot of the artwork going back thousands of years to petroglyphs, various carvings, uh, wall reliefs, depict beings coming down from the heavens and interacting with ancient man. Now, modern academia looks at these and says it's mythology. It's man's way of trying to understand his place in the universe. But it seems like ancient man went to great lengths to convey a lot of this information by showing wall reliefs, drawings, and depictions of certain events where beings were coming down from the heavens, usually on some type of a craft. The Sumerians, uh, modern day Iraq, 6,000 years ago, Mesopotamia, Babylon, the original civilization there, Sumer, has a lot of interesting similarities with our modern Bible. The stories of Adam and Eve, Noah's Ark, giants upon the earth. All of this information is told in Sumerian epics that are recorded in stone and are still unchanged to this day. So I think that ancient man went to great lengths to convey a lot of the sacred information that today we struggle to understand as mythology. That word mythology is interesting. The Greek word comes from mythos, and mythos actually meant knowledge that's held to be true and sacred among kings and priests and passed down as sacred knowledge. Since the Sumerian epic, which is around 6,000 years ago, there have been various advanced cultures who have either had some type of influence by beings from the heavens or had access to some type of lost knowledge. Some of that would include being able to build monuments that are astronomically aligned to certain constellations. Um, as an example, one of the pyramids in South America is designed to represent this god, Kukul Khan, the serpent god in the form of a snake. The Sumerians are credited with having the world's first sophisticated writing system and a deep understanding of science, mathematics, and agricultural technology, along with a highly developed society ruled by priest kings. The cuneiform writings and pictorial evidence left behind by the Sumerians suggest that they did not develop their civilization on their own. In fact, they credit their advanced knowledge to ancient beings, the Anunnaki, who came from a planet located somewhere on the outskirts of our solar system. The very name Anunnaki translates as those who from the heavens came. Anunnaki is a term uh, given by the Sumerians for the beings that visited them. Just like in the Bible it says there were once giants upon the earth, the Sumerians seem to be living in an epoch of time that the Bible is referencing, where they literally lived amongst their living gods called the Anunnaki. And the Anunnaki said that they came from not just heaven, but another planet within our own solar system. This planet they called Nibiru, stands for planet of the crossing. And this is a very interesting coincidence that 4,000 years before Jesus on the cross, the Sumerians depict the Anunnaki as coming from a glowing cross in the sky. The depiction of this planet was a glowing cross. So there's a lot of interesting religious overtones and similarities for how the Anunnaki and the Sumerians interacted and how that knowledge has been told over time in its now condensed form of biblical tales in the New Testament. What ultimately became of the Sumerians and Anunnaki? Mr. Martell's research has unearthed some possible answers. 
One of the interesting things of the Sumerian culture is to understand where did they actually go, what happened to them. And it seems very possible that as far-fetched as this might sound, there were ancient nuclear wars that took place in the Sinai Peninsula. And this is an area where we know that the Anunnaki and the Sumerians were setting up their civilization, at least from their accounts and the texts that they've left us. But modern science looks at the Sinai Peninsula and says, wow, we see evidence for uh, vitrification, glass, sand literally exposed to such a high heat that it's become vitrified, it's glass-like. When we show scientists this evidence, they say, oh, that looks like volcanic evidence uh, in that area. When we tell them there's no volcanoes in the Sinai Peninsula, they kind of shrug and say, well, then I don't know. So a lot of the stories clearly explain that the Anunnaki, in their own squabbles between different family clans, eventually had a nuclear war against each other, and that was the reason they and pretty much left everything in turmoil. And it's an interesting piece that came out of that, which is there was a time when the giants and man interacted. That's what all the Sumerian information speaks of about the Anunnaki. However, when they had this nuclear fallout, the Anunnaki leave, and all the high priests who get all this sacred information directly from the gods build statues of the various gods and start to worship and idolize these statues, which is a tradition that we still carry on today. As modern day space technology and science evolved, astronomers began to speculate on the existence of a large heavenly body tugging at Neptune and Uranus, causing them to follow irregular paths as they travel along their orbits. This body has been given the name Nibiru or Planet X. The ancient Sumerians have a very detailed epic of creation story, similar to what we have in the Bible, where it says God created the heavens and earth in seven days. Well, that story is just a derivative from an ancient Sumerian version in stone, unchanged. As an example, it's one of these stories is called the Epic of Gilgamesh, and it explains in great detail how the Anunnaki originally came here to Earth. And they give some groundwork on saying that billions of years ago, when our planets were still soft, they weren't a solid mass, that this other planet, a rogue planet, got pulled in by the gravitational effect of some of our outer planets. This planet, Planet X, had a very primitive interaction with our solar system, and it changed it in very significant ways. Um, Uranus tilted on its side. Neptune and Pluto are possibly dislodged moons from Saturn. Even modern science can confirm to some degree the creation stories given to the Sumerians by the Anunnaki of how our civilizations came to be. This planet X got pulled into our solar system and continues to now have a very long 3600 year orbit. We only go around the sun once every 365 days. Nibiru goes around our sun once every 3600 years. So it's on a much longer scale of time, but it is actually a part of our own solar system. Some say that Nibiru will pass near Earth in 2012. So will Planet X or Nibiru have any physical, gravitational, or other effects on Earth when it passes by? Is there any connection between Planet X and the many predictions of the world undergoing a large-scale transformation in the year 2012? A lot of people speculate that there's some climactic event coming, Armageddon, the revelations, Wormwood, there's certain biblical overtones that have said at some point there will be a judgment day, God will return. That's not an easy thing to answer and a lot of people seeing the science of Nibiru, the ancient planet, and Planet X, the modern understanding, start to look at those connections and add new variables to say, that must be 2012 and that the planet's coming back to kill us. I don't subscribe to any of those theories. The Mayan calendar is misinterpreted as saying that in 2012 it's the end of time. It's actually the end of a cycle of time. Everything repeats, just like in nature. Seasons come and go every year. The ancients were aware of a much larger cycle of time, this 24,000 year cycle. So a lot of people just misinterpret the Mayans or calendar and ending on a certain date. It's not ending it's starting a new cycle. People wonder when's the next time Nibiru is going to pass by. Space is three-dimensional and it's very possible that each time Nibiru passes the inner part of our solar system, 
Earth might be on one side of the sun, and Nibiru could be completely on the other side as it's looping around. So it's possible that every time Nibiru completes its orbit through our inner solar system, it might not always cause havoc on Earth. The reason why I say that is it's just a simple mathematical calculation. Um, we know Nibiru's orbit is roughly 3,600 years to go around the sun once. We know that Nibiru originally entered our solar system roughly 4.7 billion years ago. Because the Sumerians explain when the planets were just becoming a solid mass, Nibiru got attracted and became a part of our solar system. So if we take 4.7 billion years, the time when it initially came into our solar system, and divide it by 3,600, which is how long it takes to go around once, Nibiru has already looped through our solar system over a million times. So maybe not every time it completes an orbit, it's going to have gravitational effects here on Earth. Mr. Martel's book, Ancient Alien Artifacts, contains images of complex artifacts and technologies seemingly lost and forgotten by Earth's historians. Fascinatingly, he has constructed working models of two ancient technological devices, one known as the Baghdad Battery and the other the Egyptian light bulb. These brilliant advanced artifacts show how early humans harnessed technology for practical purposes. Please join us again next Monday on Science and Spirituality for the conclusion of our interview with Jason Martell, when he will discuss these amazing technologies with us and other topics. For more information on Jason Martell, please visit www.xfacts.com. Books and DVDs by Mr. Martell are available at the same website. Thank you for your company on today's program. Coming up next is Words of Wisdom after Noteworthy News here on Supreme Master Television. May heaven's guiding light always be present on our planet. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash SS. <laughs>